All right, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to let your analysis lead you to ideas. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we're looking at Act 3, Scene 3. We're looking at Romeo's response to the friar who is trying to tell him, you're lucky that you're banished, you're, you could have been executed. And Romeo tells the friar that actually the consciousness of not being with Juliet is worse than the unconsciousness of death. And, and we can see in this scene how like overly conscious Romeo is. Um, and we can see what he means. And we can see that, that we learn in this scene, one of the reasons that Romeo is, is suicidal is that he does have this overly active mind and he doesn't have any, any barriers to it, all right? So the first thing I do, and I'm, I'm using this book. Um, your book is better at this. Uh, first thing I like to do is I like to look for the words that, that the book um, highlights and annotates. And the two that it did were validity. I'll make these blue. Oh, no, no. I'll make it blue highlight. And the other one was courtship. And um, let's see if, uh, yeah, Vestal is in here. All right, give me a sec. All right, um, so. Uh, what does my book do with these? Uh, it tells me that validity is value. This is one that I'm going to, I'm going to look at courtly love is what this means. And, and I would have, I would have thought of that myself, but what's interesting is I, I when we were reading Pride and Prejudice, we thought about courtship as like wooing somebody, but the way that Romeo references it is, um, more, um, he means it more as a parallel to the word honor and honor and courtly. It's more of a reference of people of a higher class following their, their, their rule book. Now, Vestal is particularly interesting to me because it, my book tells me it means virginal or chaste. But you go ahead and Google Vestal Virgin sometime because it's a, um, it's it's actually more specific than that, and it invokes that period where where virgins were um, sacrificed to Vesta in Roman times, and they were allowed to live incredibly spoiled childhoods from from six to seven on, you know, to this tragic conflagration that they would end in, and that they would be publicly. Um, publicly sacrificed and killed. So um, I, I, it's a curious, you don't, don't, don't just look at a word as, and, and, and see that, that Folgers tells you that just means virginal and that's just a trade-off. Every word could be traded for another word. That word cannot be traded that way. And it's a, it's a uniquely uh, and creepily male uh, ideal. All right, now we look at these, these the escalation of it. We have a lot. We have first thing that, that Romeo does in this passage is he talks about how animals can be close to Juliet, but he can't. He goes from cats to dogs to little mouse, and then he ends up on the carrion fly. So one thing I might look at is the, that um, the gradation of the animals, how they go down and get to the to the lowliest creature that Romeo can pick. And their sensory placement next to Juliet um, makes them closer to Juliet. So this passage really shows that, that, that shallow aspect of Romeo, the idea that they have, especially when in this passage the carrion flies have all of these, um, have all these human qualities. They're more valid. 
I look at that and I compare, I compare value. The carrion flies have more validity than Romeo does. And I think at the end they actually become, yeah, look at this. I mean, I, they're free. They become free men by the end of this passage. I mean, so there's, there's something to look at that process of, of the, the idea of envying carrion flies, flies that feed on dead flesh. That's one of your vocabulary words. All right. Uh, it's interesting. So we go, and this is what here in heaven references. Here in heaven is is the idea like being close to Juliet. They live. It, it's interesting that he's not there. He's not physically there, but he's saying live here in heaven. He's like he's like visualizing himself in this. We we, we think about him being delusional. We 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 he pictures himself with Juliet, but he's calling it here. Uh, he's repeatedly referring to himself in the in the third person. Distance from himself, he. That's strange, you know, and and so the and then the idea of like the honor and courtship that he's endowing these flies. Um, so so when you take your analysis and you look at the you look at the the words that are used begin with looking at the folger annotations the folger versions of the words think to yourself why this word and not the other that'll lead you to other ways of reading it comprehending it you look at it fully you have a full paraphrase of what you're reading and you could hear me thinking and triggering like i i see this the triggers of of the 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 superficiality the sense based mindset. I see aspects of his de delusional nature and the idea that, that he says here in heaven when she's actually somewhere else. And these are words that you can look at and, and elements that you can look at um, and let your analysis lead you to your